Hello and welcome back. Today we are going to be trying a game called Nevergrave The Witch and the Curse. It is claiming to be a Metroidvania roguelike and one of my friends actually tossed this over to me because he knows that I like covering demos on my channel and I think I would have missed it otherwise so uh, thanks to him. But uh, we're going to go ahead and jump into this game and give it about half an hour of our time and see what we feel about it. If you are interested in the game, you can wishlist it or go and try the demo for yourself on Steam. A link will be in the description below. And don't forget to check us out on Discord. There's a link to that in their description as well. Let's get started. It's one of the things I noticed from the opening is that uh, a lot of the graphics have a... Hollow Knight-esque feel. And the fact that we just fell into a room like this... Yeah... The Hollow, the Hollow Knightism definitely exists here, but uh, at the same time, I don't actually take that as a... as a Like, some people might go, oh, it's a copy of Hollow Knight, that's, that's a mark against it, and I actually don't think that's the case. I have a little tutu. Interesting. But... I think, honestly, something that people forget is that innovation is a cornerstone of uh, being a, hu a human being. And one of the cornerstones of innovation is, well, to build on the foundations of people who came before you. So... Oh. Uh, okay. That's an interesting mechanic. So it's like Cappy. Mmm, materials. There's going to be meta progression. But I wonder if we can pogo. Do I have to? No, I don't have to pick it up. Look around with a right trigger? Okay, sure. Secrets? Can I not pick that up without... Interesting. It's a little annoying that I have to pick it up by summoning my person because, like, summoning takes a little while. You should be able to just pick those up with your hat. Ooh, that was some, uh, that was some proper Metroid blocks there. I actually haven't seen blocks like that in a game since Metroid. Just the blocks that naturally fall down. Very nice. Is this a secret? Oh no, it's just the exit. Yeah, considering how often we have to do it, the resummoning of the person is a little... It's a little long. Oh cool, you got the dead cells door opening as well. Very nice. Very nice. Wow, a lot of secrets, even in the tutorial. I took a hit. Bad gamer. See, this is what I'm talking about. I have to sit here and hold this. And then I have to do it again. It's just, it could be a little zippier. Fire skill. Fire is a straight magic bullet. This is a demo, by the way, so any of my commentary should be taken with a grain of salt. There we go. It seems like the animations don't like to cancel each other. Like, I have to wait for my sword to be fully away before I can put this, cast that spell. Oh, come on. Can't believe I just immediately fell off like that. I appreciate how many secrets there are in the demo. Can we cover mana by hitting? Makes sense. This seals like a secret. It is. Another big chest. Pick up. Come on. 
Yeah, so that was another thing there. Like, I couldn't actually do the pickup until my character's walking animation had stopped. I saw a tooltip there, but I actually couldn't read it in time. Oh, there we go. So it was a dodge tooltip. Okay. Actually, I had not noticed that the door started dodge yet. Oh, okay. So what was this tooltip? Try dodge using a uh, basic attack from behind. Some rage already. Okay. I am not doing damage to this thing, so I'm guessing this is a guaranteed defeat. Oh no, I'm doing damage. Okay. I hope they let me die on my own terms here. No air dodges. The hands coming back had a hitbox. That's a little fortunate. What? Uh, apparently the hands moving have a hitbox? How are you supposed to be able to predict that? Okay then. Sure. Fine. The art style, though. Mmm. Very good. For such a I thought these ladies had tentacles. Greetings. Seems you've been through a lot. In case of emergency, use this potion. Okay. Ooh. Uh, some more dead souls in here with the lanterns filled with all the items that I've unlocked. Honestly, all good inspiration. All good inspirations. There's nothing wrong with taking inspiration from... From other games it's just that's how we move forward as a as a community of gamers is we just take the things that are good and and go okay well you know let's make a new game using a combination of ideas because that is literally the cornerstone of creativity anytime you see anyone do anything creative it is a combination of ideas the only reason it might seem original to you is completely original to you is because you probably don't know the inspirations if you knew everything they knew then you'd probably be able to figure out, okay, well, that's where this came from, that's where this came from. So far, other than the very, very minor complaints that I've had about, like, the, the hat mechanics and stuff like that, uh, it's really good. It's like, you basically are like, hey, you want to play Dead Cells plus Hollow Knight as a roguelike? And I'm like, yes, just, just yes. The map has a very dead cells to it, for sure. I tried to dodge there. Because I was moving, I wasn't allowed to dodge or something. It was a little weird. I wonder what all of this food and stuff is for. Interesting. So we were able to do jump out of our dodge mid-air? But we can't double jump. Sorry, I found like a movement tech here. Our dodge animation counts as being on the ground. Even if we're not on the ground. Oh, there's, there's, oh, I see what happened. There's on touch damage. Contact damage, huh? Yeah, contact damage is not my favorite thing in video games. There's my first complaint. It's not the worst thing in the world though. But with no way of dealing with things that are beneath you, I don't know how we're supposed to deal with contact damage for things beneath us. That's going to be interesting to see what their answer to that uh, problem is, because otherwise it's just going to feel bad if there's an enemy beneath you. And we need, like, a desolate dive or some shit. They're going to go ahead and use references I'm going to use references to. And then this will take us back up. Yeah. Spring? Grimoire. 
Crit rates for all moves. Oh, okay, so... Interesting. Inflicts poison on attacking enemies when they hit, so that's a, like a... Thorns effect. We'll go for critical rate. So we have some proper roguelike mechanics then, too. Of each run being different. The hearts are only per run, it looks like. And they give I me mean, a little bit of max HP. I want to do this without my hat, if possible. Ooh, was that a secret? No. With this game being randomly generated, which I kind of assume it is, I'm curious how they're going to handle secrets going forward. The tutorial was rife them with them, and it felt amazing, but I haven't found a single one since we've left the tutorial. I've covered quite a bit of this level. Does that mean that the secrets are going to be a little bit less interesting because they're randomly generated? Hmm. Hard to say. Wow, it really is hard to stun lock enemies sometimes. Okay. See, now that guy's behind, below me, so I don't have any choice other than to wait until he moves on. How much supplies I'm getting? I'm definitely getting a uh, rogue legacy feel from the fact that uh, it feels like I'm probably gonna be spending all these supplies to uh, build some kind of castle or house or maybe craft a deer. There's definitely some sort of backstab mechanic going on as well. Can we slide under there? No. Let's go the other way for now. Oh, this is like a... Okay. There's like a proper mine here. I will say, thank you so much for not having to make me go and pick up all this stuff. Thank you so much for that. Best choice so far. Also, being able to grab ladders mid-ladder by jumping onto them. Very nice choice as well. There's an option up there for L2, but I just tried it. And L2 doesn't seem to do anything. We're going to switch back because there's an enemy right there. Oh, we can't. So when they're stunned, they don't have touch damage. That's good. So there's value to stunning enemies. Another grimoire. Spell damage by 20%. Reduces damage. Inflict hold to an enemy when combo it has. It's, let's try, try for that. Well, there's definitely iframes. Oh, good. You can, like, roll through two high spaces. I like that. I like that a lot. It means that you don't have to use your hat all the time. You get an impression that um, there is randomly generated secrets. Because... There was sort of, like, an incomplete secret there. Can I swim? I think I can because there's an item down there. Spirit shots. So I just have two of the same spell. Okay. Based on the Steam page, there seems like there's definitely more than one spell in the game. Just getting unlucky. Does a lot of damage from behind though, goddamn. 
What's this? Ruins, first layer terminus. So that's probably a transition. Sure. I want to see what's going on. See as far as we can get. Get as far as I, we can get, I mean. Free Grimoire. Successful critical hit when using a back attack will engulf surrounding enemies in fire. That sounds fantastic. A person? I never imagined anyone other than the, me in these dungeons. If you've made it this far with such light equipment, you must be quite capable. But the road ahead is much harsher. Here, have a knife blueprint. If you can make one, I think you'll find it quite useful. So there are different weapons. Good to know. Uh, oh, so I'm choosing what my next thing is. Lead with spell attack or poison on enemies that have 50% light speed or HP or less. Let's rub bleed. No boss. Okay. Also, no flash refill. Oh, my spells recharge separately. Interesting. Is there something up here? I really want to jump down that hole to te check, but I'm pretty sure I'm just trying to take damage. I don't. If I had more HP, I would check. But I don't really have a lot of HP to give right now. We'll say one of the compelling things that seems to be missing here is... Ooh. That's an interesting type of secret. I've never seen that before in any game. Raises lava spice from the ground. Oh, but it's only a recipe. Okay. Is that, um... In, um... Dead Cells, you can spend currency mid-run as well. I think that would be... Pretty nice addition. to move. Yeah, he definitely caught fire. Screw you. Use that jump tech to get a little bit farther of a jump. Nothing up there. Okay. There's something down here, though. Also, what? Okay, I was spamming a left click, um, or yeah, uh, attack and holding forward, and apparently. I just stopped attacking for some reason and walked into it, but okay. New blueprint can be researched. Okay. It's like there's a lot of options. There's looks like basically if we're going to buy the lanterns alone, it looks like there's a lot of things. So apparently there's a village that is separate from this place. interesting in the village. Did we go back to the ruins? To see the village? She said... Did I miss something? Do I have to get past the ruins to get to the village? Still just the same spell over and over again. Feel like I missed something there.
Okay. I'm getting the hang of this. Those aren't back attacks, they're just crits. It's no. Okay. Oh, the L2 is my potion. The floating just sort of worked against me there. I overcorrected. Grimoire. Basic attack damage by 20%. Hell yeah. Uh, let's grab um this portal before I walk down there. I feel like I have a lot of resources. Hard to tell though. Like what what's a lot, right? Just who knows? Building may cost hundreds and hundreds. It definitely seems like a game though that's going to require meta progression in order to win. Hard to say though. I won't I don't I don't want to judge too early there. A lot of aerial control. Receive blessing. That's new. Explodes the enemy and its surroundings when they die. Adds eight bleeding to spell attacks. Attacking an enemy at full poison at full HP poisons them. Well, that happens every single time. Yeah, that's really good. The huge DPS. Uh, okay, you can't roll up. Good to know. I tried to do a roll up. You can, you just don't have iframes. Good to know. You don't know what I'm talking about. It's a bit of a... Smash Brothers thing. First 10% of HP. Sure. I'm actually perfectly fine with a chest that just gives me a little bit of HP. I like that the doors also break the resources for me. They don't grab onto the ledge. There we go. Realistically speaking, because they're separate uh, bars, having two of the same spell is actually pretty good. I don't know what's used for, but I want your soul. This is a weird question to ask, but is there any reason to not pick up some of these pick up pick up bowls? Like the HP potions or the HP hearts and the extra coins. The things that are causing me to have a dead stop and pick them up. Because if there isn't a reason to not pick them up ever, then having me completely stop to pick them up does feel a little bad. Just gave me 15 stone this time. That's... that doesn't feel good. Critical rates, bad facing enemies increase or... Increase rewards by enemies are stronger. Enemies are already pretty strong. I don't know what to tell you, game. Okay, don't jump out of dodges. It kills your iframes. We're learning. I get that visiting the village would be interesting, but I don't know how to do that. Okay. Oh, 
It's literally here. Why don't you have that available whenever you're first standing on it? Interesting. Whole village lies in shambles. Can't not even try to rebuild in the rubble this way. Well, there you go. No more rubble. Oh, apparently there must be more rubble. Nice mechanic to make sure that you have enough materials to build with at the beginning. I do want to, in the last minutes here, um, show off whatever meta progression this game is going to be throwing at you. Because then we'll have pretty much the full game loop. Thanks to you, the breeze has been taken care of. Small Titan Gratitude. Okay. But how do I do that? Must be this lady then. Oh, there's literally like a building menu. Can I not push it down? I can put pull it up, but not down. The only thing that I can actually build, I have limited room war slots, good to know. Maybe this guy will give me a facility. Research facility. There we go. Can I build it just anywhere? This research facility looks very much like, um, okay, a guy popped into it. For a second, I was about to say, this is like, uh, what is that game called? Oxygen not included. Originally a venter in the court, always loves making new things. Anyways, let's start researching floating sword. We research it, you'll be able to use it as well. Oh, it's a new spell. I mean, it doesn't cost that much, so. Well, that's a noise. I'll turn that down. Also got a knife. Very nice. Combat monument uploads up and lots of combat up upgrade tree. There's our meta progression. Basic attack damage. So this is increased damage. Increased damage. Increased damage. Equipped tool. Okay, so that's some sort of utility. Each green increased damage with another flavor. More MP. Adds traits according to your spell level. Don't know. Damage. Damage. So, there are two utility things on this first tree, and everything else is increased damage. Okay. I mean... I can't really complain. That's kind of like how things go with these kinds of games, right? But it's something that you should be aware of whenever it comes to like... Oh, I'm, I'm literally required to upgrade once. Okay. I'll, I'll upgrade this. Let's go ahead and head back in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's already telling me to go back. Is it because they want me to upgrade at the monument? No, there's actually something different now. Okay, interesting. Survival monument. I think, uh, I think I, uh, moved too fast for the game. It's throwing so much, throwing a lot of stuff at me at all once now. 
we'll put the other monument next to it. And then we'll put a planter down for this lady. Might as well put it on the grass. Let's throw a monument. Uh, extra HP. Effective HP. Extra HP. Recovers HP when acquiring a Grimoire Blessing. That's actually kind of nice. Resurrection. More HP. More HP. More HP. And another re Resurrect. So there's two Resurrections. Okay. Take some more time until water can be drawn. Okay. Uh, the tutorial seems to have broken in the top left there. Do I have a watering can? I don't think I have a watering can. That's probably why it broke. I can't research it. It's very funny to me that I could just, like, die. I know that the video was talking about the, um, Steam page was talking about possessing enemies as well. So I'm very curious about that. Let's go into one more run, and, uh, I'll check back with you guys if I run into anything new. Well... Oh, the knife wasn't a new weapon. It's just a spell. Okay. That's pretty cool. Spells already seem like they're getting pretty cool. Does it go under this thing? Yeah. L1 is such a hard button to press in the middle of combat. I think I have a pretty good handle on what this game is, going to, is wanting to do. And, uh, I mean, I think it seems pretty good. You know, I just realized that I possess by hitting things. Wait, 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 wait. Let's just try this, because I saw this on the Steam page. Let's see if we can possess a creature super fast, because it hasn't su suggested I do it. Okay. I at least can't possess that. Okay. So I don't think I can possess yet. Well, anyways, this has been Nevergrave. I have been Arima. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. If you guys have, feel free to leave a like, comment, and or subscribe. And definitely go check it out on Steam. Give it a wishlist. Um, it seems like even this demo, like, for a demo, this has been really polished. Definitely go check it out and uh, give them the, your support. And I hope you have a good day. Goodbye. Goodbye.